Hello, welcome to the Intel with Greg Cosell. I'm Jeff Mosher with Adam Kaplan, and we're joined again by the star of the show, Greg Cosell. And today's Intel from Greg Cosell is going to be about safeties, free agent safeties in the NFL. The Eagles have two starting safeties. Both of them are free agents. There's also a bunch of household names at that position that we're going to talk about who uh, could be changing jerseys this offseason. If you missed episode one of season two of the Intel of Greg Gosell, we focused on cornerbacks. It's up on Inside the Birds, YouTube, and podcast platforms. So we're sticking with this theme here, Greg, of defensive backs. Yeah. We'll start with Eagles defensive backs. And, of course, the theme is uh, their their contracts are about to expire. Got C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Got Marcus Epps. Now, uh, we've detailed C.J. Gardner-Johnson is not a guy that the Eagles plan to let go of and let get out of the building. So we're going to look uh, and we're going to talk to you specifically about what you saw from him in this Eagles defense this year. We know he moved from a nickel position in New Orleans yep. to a safety position, uh, more of a traditional safety position in the Eagles defense uh, you liked him even as a nickel coming in from New Orleans, but what was your impressions of how he moved to safety and acclimated to that position, and what jumped out to you? Just one quick point. I think much of how the Eagles approach the safety position in free agency will be dependent on who the D.C. is. If it's an in-house D.C., it's very possible they could make an effort to sign both uh, Gardner Johnson and Marcus Epps. If it's someone from the outside who comes in with maybe a slightly different system and approach, then you don't know how they view the safety position. Although I think Gardner Johnson is scheme transcendent. Um, you know, I would say I love Gardner Johnson going back to his days at Florida where he kind of played both as well. And he actually, I remember him making an interception. I think it might have been even in a ball game where he played safety and showed the ability to read routes and understand how to how to uh, play off one route and attack another route. So he was always a really savvy, aware, intuitive player. And then obviously got to the Saints and they used him more as a slot corner and with the exception of at times against Chris Godwin, who a lot of people had trouble with, he was actually a really, really good slot corner. Um, but because of his safety background and because of his understanding of, of uh, formations, receiver distribution, receiver location, understanding of route concepts based on splits, he has a great feel for the safety position. And he has really good ball skills. And sometimes that can be overlooked because we know he made a number of picks this year, and who knows, he might have led the league in picks if he didn't get hurt. Um, so, you know, I to me, he's a player you want to re-sign. I think he can play in any scheme whatsoever, and I think he's one of the better safeties in the NFL. Greg, his ability to track the football, it, it, it was incredible because he had to learn this defense in season. Yep. What did that look like to you? What, what made him so good at it? I just think he's one of those guys, Adam, you know, we're not in his head. We're not in the meeting room. So yeah. we don't know how he went about doing that. But, I, you know, based on watching him in college, watching him in New Orleans, my sense is he's just one of those guys that intuitively understands concepts and, and just sees the game exceptionally well. You know, I remember years and years ago, I had a great opportunity to talk on the phone with Ed Reed. And one of the things he said, and I've never forgotten this, is he said, I almost know what routes are coming just by the receiver distribution, meaning how many receivers are on each side, two by two, three by one, and their splits. He says, I, so I knew the routes. I knew the routes just from that. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that Gardner, I don't know whether Gardner Johnson is that guy or not, but there are times he appears to play like that. So my guess is he's just very intuitive, very understanding of what's going on. I would assume he probably studies, but so much of playing safety, particularly when you're playing on the back end, whether post safety or, or in a two shell, is understanding what comes from two by two sets, three by one sets. That's what you do all week in film study. Greg, give mm -hmm. give our listeners and viewers an idea of who you know those who don't really get to see the tape very much of where you see Gardner Johnson on the field on any given uh, snaps and situations. Where do you most commonly see him line up? Uh, because obviously, even though he's a safety, you, he doesn't just stay in the same spot the whole game. There's deep, there's post, there's man match concepts. So give, well, that, give, us, give us an idea yeah. of where you've seen him mostly. And again, up. that would depend on where, three by one, two by two, right. because two by two, the Eagles played a lot of um, a split safety. So in, in two by two, he would be a split safety. Um, 
three by one, very often he'd be, to, you know, be to the strong side, not always, but he'd be to the strong side. So if it was not man per se, but he'd be to the side lining up sort of over the number three receiver, not near the line of scrimmage, but he'd be on that side of the formation. Um, uh, so that's where he predominantly line up. Uh, and, and obviously if they played man, you know, he'd, he'd often match the tight end, not 100%, but often match the tight end. Um, sometimes he, what the Eagles might do, even in man, if it was a one by three set, and by one by three, we mean that the single receiver would be the tight end. Um, and there would be three wide receivers to the trip side. Very often he would match man to man on number three to trips, the receiver closest to the formation, because they would keep Bradbury or Slay matched on the tight end to the single receiver side because they felt very, very comfortable with Gardner Johnson playing man to man on wide receivers, because obviously he did that, you know, a good part of his career in New Orleans. So that was not something new to him. So Greg, Marcus Epps has been this great yeah. story guy. They claim off waivers, former six rounder for the Vikings in 19. They claim off waivers his rookie season. He's kind of worked his way up. He became a full-time starter this past season. I was surprised that he became as good as he would be. I mean, he, and I give Jim Schwartz yeah. a lot of credit. He hung in with him, and then Schwartz was gone. This, this staff kept him as a starter. What did his tape look like to you as a full-time starter this season? Yeah, and I've always liked him, Adam. You know, I, I liked him going back to when he played kind of, you know, spot duty, you know, got snaps, maybe played 15, 20 snaps a game. I always thought he stood out on tape, and he just kept working and working and working. And from what I understand, he's a really smart guy and, um, you know, really understands things extremely well. So to me, you know, this now becomes dependent, as we said, on on who the D.C. is. If it's in, in-house, I would think you'd try to keep him. Um, I don't know what kind of number he'll garner. You may have done more research on that, Adam, and have information on that that I don't have because I certainly don't know that. Um, if it's a new coordinator, then you don't know. You don't know if that becomes a priority or not. Um, but I think Marcus Epps is a really complete safety, not a phenomenal athlete, which is why you wouldn't talk about him in the top five or six safeties in the league. Certainly not a below average athlete, but I thought he played downhill in the run game really well. Good tackler, filled well in the hole. Um, I think he can play on the back end. Maybe, you know, he's probably not a true post safety, but for a team like the Eagles that played a good number of snaps of split safety, he can do that effectively. I thought he read routes really well. I can picture in my mind right now as we're talking a number of times where he planted and drove downhill on crossing routes and made plays on the receiver or the ball. Um, so I thought he's, I think he's just a really solid safety. Uh, Adam, do you have a sense of what he might garner on the open market? Hard to say, but with so many, you've got Fangio in Miami. You've got, yep. you've got all the, we got Jim Schwartz now in Cleveland. You've got Steichen, you've got John DeGannon. This ups the ante a little bit. You know, it's yeah, not sure. something you can plan for, but look, this guy's going to, this guy's going to get interest and he's been a great, he's done a great job progressing and, and improving. Yeah. I expect him to get it. I expect him to get a really good deal. Yeah, that'll be interesting because there's, as we're going to discuss as we go further, there's a number of free agent safeties out there right now that, you know, it depends on what you're looking for, but, you know, and we're going to go through the list, but, you know, it'll be in, I'll be fascinated to see what he garners on the open market. I'm, I'm curious because Adam <laughs> brought up what you guys were just talking about, the idea of a po po someone poaching him that has familiarity with him. Steichen's in Indianapolis. I believe James, uh, their, their coordinator defensively is still Gus Bradley, correct? Yes. And Gus Bradley plays a, a, a like kind of a he's a cover cover one cover three yeah, but he, guy, he, right? But he's played a lot more split safety the last couple of years. That that has gone around the league a lot more than mm -hmm. even guys who back in the day like Gus Bradley have played a lot of um, you know, ju just like Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, mm -hmm. the Legion of Boom, the original guy, he plays a ton of man, a ton of single high. You know, a lot of guys have have um, you know, now moved to play a lot more split safety. So, sure. you know, guys have evolved. Do you think Marcus Epps fits well for a team that is maybe more pure cover one, cover three as a guy who can come in and be that box safety, uh, but also be interchangeable because he can play the post a bit? That I would see him, just me based on film, a little more uh, with a team that has a little more split safety foundation, Jeff. Okay. Because, you know, again, he has matched up to tight ends in the Eagles defense, but I don't know if you want to do that with a healthy dose. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, what is the, I guess with Marcus, 
Greg, you see an improving player, um, but the athleticism I think sort of holds him back from that upper tier. I would probably say that. I think he's just a really solid football player. You know, like for instance, he's not at the level of, let's say, a Jordan Poyer, who's also a free agent. You know, you wouldn't call Poyer a high, high level athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're similar in some ways, but Poyer is just a better player. Gotcha. Good comp. All right. So, um, Adam, what are we, we're going to move on to uh, some of the other safeties, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesse yeah. Bates is going to be the big name uh, on yep. the market. Adam, what are the, uh, before Greg gives the breakdown, any kind of uh, knowledge there on whether he's definitely going to be a free agent or whether the Bengals are going to try to work uh, this thing? No, well, what, we're because we're not even we're not even at the, the stage that they start talking contract yet. Right. Um, they, they have the franchise tag available to them if they want for the second straight year. I, I do find it interesting, Greg, if you go to Jesse Bates. <clears throat> yeah, they were not they were not even close to getting a deal with him last season. And I know he's been a lot of hype, but what does the tape show to you? I think he's a good player. I mean, look, he, he can play. He's a back end safety for the most part, but not a hundred percent, but he's got post and split field range to cover grass. Okay. He's got scheme versatility. He can play from depth. He can spin down in coverage. We've seen him do that. Um, he can play in the box. Um, you know, th the way they played in Cincinnati, Von Bell was predominantly the box safety and the line of scrimmage safety. So Bates, a high percentage of the time, was more of a post safety when they played single high. That's been his M.O., but he does play downhill well. He's got excellent range. He's got good ball skills. He reads routes. He reads the quarterback well. But I think if you sign him, and he's a very good player for what he is, but I think if you sign him, you have to understand exactly what he is. He's more of a post safety than a box safety. Or a back end safety, I should say, because he plays both single high and and split. But he's much more of a back end safety than a box safety. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine there's going to be a, a decent number of teams that are going. I mean, we see that there are some secondaries that are in bad need of help. But we mentioned on the podcast, uh, the Minnesota Vikings are a team that's going to have some money to spend and really need to reshape and refurbish their secondary. And of course, anybody that has you know a need for safety you think jeremy bates is yep. uh, jesse bates sorry will be the the top name there you mentioned his teammate von bell who's also going to be free agent he was with new orleans first uh how do you see bell as a free agent safety what is he more scheme specific to you greg or can he play Could be, anywhere? because i think bell is um is you know mostly it's funny because bell is not and i think the thing that has prevented him from being a quote-unquote great player is the fact that he really has box safety line of scrimmage traits but he's not big you know you normally think of guys who play that that way being in the 210 215 range bell is not that guy but i think bell's a really good player and from what i understand from people in cincinnati he is a glue kind of player really smart adam i don't know if you've spoken to people Really smart, aware, keeps things together, knows how to play, you know, does all the right things. He's a very good blitzer, matches up to tight ends at times because he has to when they play nickel and, and they do play man. So he, he does a lot of things, but he's more of a box line of scrimmage player than he is a, a single high. Now, he can't play split safety. Most guys can't play split safety. They have less grass to cover, um, but he's not a post safety. He, he really has a strong, a strong safety skill set. He just yeah. wish he weighed 10, 15 more pounds. He's yeah. just, he built, he's actually built his body up. He's, he's not very tall. He's somewhere 5'10". No, and he's half. probably 5'10 or so. Yeah. 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 But in fact, there was one point I remember he was a top safety coming out uh, know, three or four years ago from the Saints, as Jeff mentioned. He didn't get the big deal that he was expecting. No. no. It's, so I think the league kind of told him because he doesn't have that versatility that you're talking about, but certainly a good football player. Yeah. And then how about Jordan Poyer, formerly drafted by the Eagles, a, drafted as a corner, removed to safety. He moved to safety later on, and he's, he's yeah. done a great job. He's made a lot of money. How good is this football player? Yeah, this guy's really good. I mean, <clears throat> this guy to me is, is just kind of the epitome of a guy that's not a superior athlete, but just knows how to play. I mean, he's he can match in coverage. He can match tight ends. Um, he can track the ball from, from a single high safety alignment. He can play – uh, split safety alignments. He can play multiple roles and sub packages. Um, he's he's become a terrific, terrific player who is able to play well beyond the fact that you wouldn't call him a a su super athlete. But he but because of it, the way in which he plays and what he sees, 
he he has great play speed and range even though you, you wouldn't say wow this guy's a special athlete but he Jordan Poyer is a really really good player all right, moving on. You know, one of the things that we're going to focus on here is that teams like to, you know, again, if they are, are like the Eagles are going to do their best to keep, they're going to keep uh, CJ Gardner Johnson in house. If they lose Epps, Greg, they may still want a veteran on a one year deal, just like they had several veterans on a one year deal this past year, because the idea of making Reed Blankenship your starter, it might not be in their minds. They might not be ready for that. Haven't seen enough from Kavon Wallace. So, uh, there's a couple names out here, and you wonder, are these guys good one-year deal type veterans? Some of them may get more than one year. But, I mean, Adrian Amos is a guy who I guess would be on his third contract by now, right? Chicago, Green Bay, and yeah. now he's a free agent again. So that might be someone who's on a one-year deal. What have you seen from Amos? Amos is a solid. There was a time, you know, a year or two ago, where I thought Amos and Savage and things changed dramatically were a really nice safety combination in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, Amos is a consistent, reliable player. He's got length. He's got size. You can play him on the back end. You can play him in the box. He can match up to tight ends. He's just a really one of those solid football players. You know, he's, again, you know, safeties with very few exceptions, you don't usually say safeties are our guys that are just unbelievable you know there's always a few of those guys but amos is is a really solid player and how do you guys know how old he is he seems like he's been yeah, around he for turns, a while yeah he turns 30 in april mm -hmm. yes yeah so i mean he still probably has some some years left i don't know if he'd be viewed jeff in response to what you asked as a one-year guy or if mm -hmm. some team's going to give him a two three-year deal i don't think he's going to you know break the bank but i'd be curious to see if a team would be interested in giving him a, a two three-year deal i think he's just a really solid player you know if, if you're lacking at the safety position he'd be an upgrade for sure you know with there's no question he's a he's a really nice player penn state kid as you know jeff yeah um, mm -hmm. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he went to Penn State as a corner and was moved to safety. Yeah, I believe uh, that is correct. Yeah. So, so Greg, a guy that I need to know you've like because you've seen him a lot because he plays for the Cowboys is Donovan Wilson. Who just oh yeah, yeah. Contract. Tell us about. Him. I really like Donovan Wilson. You know, obviously because they were in the same division as the Eagles. I see the Cowboys probably seen him every single game for the last number of years. And this guy always shows up on film. Um, he's probably better playing downhill. I would say that's probably his strength. He's a physical downhill safety. He will hit you. Um, he's got a really good frame. He's probably, I would say he's probably six feet, 205, give or take. Um, you know, I'm just, I don't have that in front of me, but I'm just sort of seeing him in my mind. Um, you know, he, he, be, he became a full-time starter. They, they're a, Cowboys were a big nickel defense, so they played three safeties as their base defense. So he literally played, I don't want to say every snap, but I would say he probably played over 80% of their snaps when he was, you know, might have missed a game or two. Um, I think he got a little better in coverage. There were times he did play the back end, but I think for the most part, he's probably better closer to the line of scrimmage. So again, I don't know if he's, if, if he's a guy that is, one dimensional that way he's a little more than that but that's his best trait he's a physical guy greg there's always um a pattern right that we know of with which teams operate they draft a player they like a player they try to get him extended uh you know if they like him enough usually after three years right before he gets closer to free agency um and if if he's not that guy and he's not getting extended you almost see him get phased out for the next guy but every right. once in a while there's someone who comes along and it's hard to to it defies the logic there and and with the Steelers Terrell Edmonds was a first round pick for them he was not extended after three years not extended after four years so he's played but he's also started pretty much every game for them he, this was just his uh fifth year so I guess he played on the fifth year option uh will be a free agent what does the tape show on him to the point where the Steelers never felt compelled to extend him but yet started him for the entirety of his five years there. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. He's, you know, he's a guy to me, Edmonds, that doesn't really stand out a lot on, on tape. Um, 
you know, I've seen him through the years get beat by tight ends. You know, he sort of matched up to tight ends quite a bit because once they got Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick is, he can match up to tight ends really well, but he's so good as a kind of see the ball, see route safety that they like to use him, you know, as more as a single high player because he's so good at that. Um, and Edmonds is a big physical kid who, you know, seemingly would play in the box, but it, you know, I'm just thinking back watching him. It doesn't seem like he makes a ton of tackles. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Again, this is all tape study. You know, he doesn't stand out to me. You know, like, I don't know if he's going to get, a, a, I don't think he would get a big deal. Adam, yeah. I don't know what you think. I don't think given the number of safeties that are free agents this year, yeah. I, I don't think he'd be high on the list. Greg, a, a guy that you've seen a lot and he's done a good job for the Giants is Julian Love and his yeah. contract just expired. What are your thoughts on him? Julian Love made the transition from Notre Dame corner to safety with the Giants. So he offers kind of a diverse skill set because he can match up and play man-to-man -man coverage because he was a corner. Uh, but he also can play in the, on the back end and showed, I, I don't want to say great range, but good enough range to be a single high player. And as I said, certainly can play in split safety coverages. Now, played a ton of snaps this year in Wick Martindale's defense. And we know that Wick Martindale likes his safeties to do a lot of different things. So not only did he play on the back end, he played at times in the box. He matched up man to man on tight ends. As I said, he was a corner in college. You know, he's got a pretty diverse skill set. He's a good football player. He's a smart football player. Again, he's a guy that would upgrade your safety position, you know, if, if you don't have safeties. He's he's a solid young player. Boy, this discussion we're having, I, I don't remember a free agent safety class this deep in no, quite a right. while. I mean, even really if we're is. if you're not in love with Terrell Edmonds or or Donovan Wilson, I mean, these guys are playing significant minutes for teams that are generally good. You know, I mean, they're they're playing a lot of snaps and even the next guy I'm going to ask you about sort of again another guy who's played the entirety of his contract was not extended after three years just won a Super Bowl Juan Thornhill yeah with the Chiefs is young yeah. he's 27 years old and you know maybe the Chiefs will resign him they've got some some other things they've got to take care of they gave a lot of money to Justin Reed last offseason so they may not find it be able to pay both safeties but what does the tape say show about Thornhill you know, it's really funny you mentioned Thornhill because going back when he came out of the University of Virginia, I did him in our NFL matchup draft show because I really, really liked him coming out of Virginia. I remember an interception he made on the back end where he showed the ability to read routes and to flip his hips and make a great play. I really liked him, guys. And, you know, obviously in, in Kansas City, he never became a full-time starter in until this year and some might say that's a real negative because the guy he really couldn't beat out was Daniel Sorensen and Sorensen mm -hmm. of course is gone but then Thornhill became the starter this year but he's predominantly a back-end safety uh, but he's got great length he's got really good size I think he does have ball skills I, I know he doesn't have a ton of interceptions but he does have ball skills I think he's another guy we've spoken about a lot of guys that have specific traits and therefore need to be deployed in a specific way. If you sign Thornhill, I think you have to recognize that he's a back end safety for the most part. One more guy, Mike Edwards of the Bucks. Is uh, years. What do you think of him? You know, again, another guy, I, I, I really liked his tape coming out of the university of Kentucky and actually had a great conversation was it last year or the year before at the combine with Todd Bowles about him? Because um, uh -huh. you know, obviously he's in Tampa, and Bowles really, really liked his his size, his physicality. Uh, and I remember Todd telling me he just needed to become a little, you know, smarter is not the right word. I hate using that word, you know, because then people think guys are stupid and that's not what we're trying to say. But, you know, I think just in terms of picking up everything he needed to pick up within the context of the defense. Um, he's also played slot at times, by the way. So mm -hmm. he's a versatile player. He's physical. He's competitive. He's tough. I've always liked Mike Edwards, and and I think you I think he can do a lot of different things in the context of your defense. He almost has some linebacker traits as well because of his size and physicality. Well, that's a pretty interesting conversation. What we've just uh, determined here is that the safety free agent safety class is pretty deep. You can get some pretty good players here. We just named about five, six, seven. Adam, this might actually wind up benefiting the Eagles when it comes to Marcus Epps because 
I don't. We'll, we'll have to find out, and that's what we'll be in Indianapolis and for, and, and Greg will be there too. Sort you know, of there's, what there's the rankings guy, are. There's uh-huh. one other guy who I think is a terrific, terrific football player. All right. Oh yeah, go and for it. He's played slot corner with a very, very good defense for the last number of years, but he's a safety really at heart, and that's Jimmy Ward. Oh yeah. Mm. And I think Jimmy Ward is an absolutely terrific football player, and. You know, again, I don't know what he prefers to play because I don't know Jimmy Ward, but he was a safety. And I think he's just, I mean, to me, because I, you know, I, I do Niners radio. So I've watched the Niners every snap for 15 years. Jimmy Ward, to me, is a really, really good player. And I think that he's going to demand a pretty good contract, Adam. I don't know what you, you've heard. Yeah, the, um, the only issue, he's got two issues. He's been on IR five times in his career. I know the injury, yes. And he's turned 32 in, in July. Ben. Yeah, that's what, the issue. I can't believe he's been in the league since 14. Wow, I would have said guess six. But he, he is such a he's good, good player. player. And he, yeah. he may be a guy because of the injuries and the age that's a one-year player, and he may not get what he thinks he's going to get. So, mm-hmm. But he's a really good player. So when you've got about 10 safeties, we just named there with Ward included, who can all play, you know, there, there's yeah, various oh yeah, levels. Yeah. You can line um, up with any of these guys and play and be totally fine. Right. That might, when you have a marketplace that big for a guy like Marcus Sepps, who's probably not proven as much as some of the other guys that we mentioned, and doesn't have the same pedigree. You know, that's interesting. The, I, I think what stands in the Eagles way most is what we mentioned earlier is that there's a couple of good coordinators out there or coaches who have experience, personal experience with Marcus whether it's Jim Schwartz or Gannon or Steichen, who's seen him on the other side, that might work against them. But, you know, again, there's there's a lot of safeties here in the marketplace. So uh, didn't realize yeah. it until we did this show. That's going to be one of the more fascinating. <laughs> you know, and then the other factor agency. is if you don't want to spend a ton of money or let's say you you do spend a ton of money on Gardner Johnson because you just decide, hey, this guy's really good and we need him. And therefore, maybe we got to let Marcus Epps walk and we need a one year deal guy. You know, there are guys like that there, you know, Devin McCourty is probably a one year deal guy and he's obviously a good football player. Deron Harmon's probably a one year deal guy and he's been in the league a long time. So it all depends. I think the, the, the Gardner Johnson situation will dictate what happens at the other safety position. Why don't you close it out by just giving us your thoughts on Reed Blankenship, what you saw from him. Um, and then maybe in comparison with Kavon Wallace in the Eagles defense. You know everything I say is based on tape. Kevon Wallace will not be the guy. If Kevon Wallace is the guy, the Eagles have a problem. And mm-hmm. I'm just being honest based on tape. Um, they know that too, by the way, because he didn't play. You know, right. when it came time, when they had to play another safety because Gardner Johnson got hurt, it wasn't Kevon Wallace. So that they're telling you what it, this is. I, we don't have to make this up. Right. This is not an opinion. They told you. Okay. So I thought Reed Blankenship played well. Um, in an ideal world, they probably would view him more as a, you know, a backup type. Um, I think he's a really smart player, savvy player, understood angles, understood how to play coverage, probably just not exactly what you want athletically on the back end. All right. Great stuff. That's going to do it for episode two, as we focused on safeties. Episode three, we're going to move a little further inside the trenches and get into the defensive line, I believe is what we decided we were going to do with episode three for Greg. And we know the Eagles and a lot of NFL teams have a lot of decisions to make, and there'll be some really good names in free agency there as well. So that's going to do it for the Intel with Greg Cosell for Adam Kaplan and the man Greg Cosell. I'm Jeff Mosher. We'll catch you on the next one.